Welcome back everyone. In this lesson I want to talk a little bit about contributing to the Groovy project. So we've gone through this course. We really really like all of the things that Groovy can do and one of the things that makes Groovy so special is that it's a free and open source project. So if you've ever wanted to get into an open source project that you really like and that is helpful to you and you wanted to find a way to contribute back uh, here's your opportunity. So we're going to go through a couple of things today that you can do to kind of give back to the Groovy community. So we're here on the main website and we're going to go over to the community tab and right underneath there there is a contribute section so let's go to contribute. So whenever people think about contributing to open source projects their mind always tends to first grasp at the idea of writing code. And while that is one thing that you can do, there are many more things that you can do to help contribute to the language. And there's just a whole page here of things that we can kind of go through. So one thing you can do is get on the mailing lists. If you start to get really good at using Groovy and you've come across problems and you know how to fix them, get on the mailing list, see if somebody's had an issue that, that you had and help them solve that. We were all there once and we all know how that, that Feel, feels to, ha to have that helplessness of not knowing how to do something. So go on and help them. So you could do that on the mailing list or even if you go on Stack Overflow and, and find some questions there. It's always nice helping people out that way. Another thing you could do is report issues. So th the engineers that are in part of that that are part of the Groovy project can't fix an issue if they don't know that it exists. So if you've come across an issue, then you go on the mailing list, you ask for some help and people seem to think that it's a bug, then you can go ahead and file that bug yourself. So report that issue back so that they are aware of it and can fix it. Another thing you could do is improve the documentation. So if you see something in the documentation that is wrong, even something in, as simple as a misspelling, you can go ahead and improve that. So there's some information here. There's also a blog post that gives you some details on how you can actually do so. And then finally, we can contribute code. So if you start to get uh, efficient in writing Groovy code and you understand the, the different packages and, and the different sub-projects that's part of the Groovy source code, then we can go ahead and contribute some code. So there's some information here, um, but I'm also going to kick over to the main um, Groovy uh, GitHub repository, and there's some information on here as well. So the first thing that we want to do is actually check this out. Um, you need to know a little bit about Git uh, if you want to go ahead and contribute back uh, because you're going to end up giving a pull request. But all we're going to do is actually go in and you would just git clone um, whatever that repo is uh, right here. And that's going to go ahead and download it. I've actually already downloaded it. So I'm just going to ls here and we can cd into Groovy. And that is the main project for Groovy. If you look at that and then look here, that is all the same source code. So once that's done, I'm actually going to go and open up that project in um, IntelliJ. And so we have a normal project here that we can work with. This is something we're used to. Here's a build.gradle file. And uh, this may seem a little overwhelming at first, but it really isn't. Um, it's really just uh, <clears throat> making up a bunch of different sub-projects. And so these sub-projects are all the different kind of packages that we're used to working with. So I know we looked at templates in this particular course. So if we go into Groovy templates and go into the source folder in main, we can see there's some different uh, source files here. So we've looked at the simple template engine. And here's the actual source code for the simple template engine. So if we found an error in here, we can go in and fix it and, and go ahead and commit uh, a pull request uh, to the main project to get that included. So once you actually go in and change source code, you're going to need a way to go ahead and build it. So if you come back into the documentation here, to build everything, we can use Gradle clean dist. Um, so the command um, downloads the correct version needed. Uh, you don't need, uh, basically it creates a, a distribution for you. Um, to build everything and launch the unit test, you would want to run Gradle W test. So let's just run this right now. And I'm going to go ahead and clear this. Um, so 
So we're just gonna look at this and we're actually using the Gradle wrapper. So I'm just gonna say Gradle W clean dist. And this is going to go and start building uh, our groovy project here. Now this is going to take a little while the first time that you do it, um, just because there's a lot to do. Um, so if this takes a minute, I may go ahead and just skip forward for you. All right, so our build is done, and like an old friend of mine used to say, you never really get invested into an open source project until you've built it from scratch. So that was fun. Um, basically what happened is it went through and actually built all the sub-projects for us and then built the entire project together for us. So if we jump back into IntelliJ here, we're going to actually see a new folder in here called Target, and if we look under Libs, there's going to be some jar files. So we're going to see basically, so right now at the time of this recording, the current version, the current uh, stable version is 2.4.6. So you'll see that we're working with uh, definitely some uh, a snapshot release here. So it creates everything that we need here and then the, uh, creates the all jars that we're going ahead and include. And then you'll see these dash indies. So if you're not uh, sure what indie is, I'm going to include another link in here as well with the video. And really indie just means that it has invoke dynamic support. Um, really what it comes down to, as long as you're on uh, 1.7 or higher, you should be using the indie. Um, it just adds uh, invoke dynamic support. If you're on a lower version of the JDK, like 1.5, 1.6, um, then you'll want to use the version without the indie support. But I'll give you this link so you can go ahead and read through that to find out a little bit more. So that's all it is. It creates our distributions for us, and now we're ready to go. So whether you want to um, contribute back to the project or if you just wanted to build the source from scratch and start to play with the snapshot, you could do that as well. So I think that's it. Um, again, I'm going to include all these links with the video. And just to recap... You know, everybody thinks that contributing to an open source project is fixing bugs or adding new code. And while that's going to help, uh, that's not everything. Uh, we always need help, uh, uh, you know, helping people on the mailing lists or uh, contributing to documentation, uh, entering JIRA items, things of that sort. So if you want to contribute to Groovy, the open source project, I hope this video helped out and... Um, Hope that you get inspired to go ahead and, and help out in some form or fashion. So thanks, and let's go ahead and move on.